If you're returning, welcome back. If not, I'm George. This is Barley and Hops, the channel that offers you the unvarnished truth about everything you need to know about home distilling, or as much as we can possibly offer. So, uh, make sure you hit subscribe, hit the little bell icon, and uh, that way you'll always get the updates on every video that we publish. Heater element, still, guess what? Now, after that short introduction, um, it came to me that there are a lot of people still doing, I mean, look, if you're going to add a heating element to a still, it's not that difficult. Um, and I have one that I just happen to have here that does not have an element in it, and I've got to use an alternate source to heat this. Well, now, even though it's magnetic and I can use my new wave cooktop, uh, I'm going to put a heater element in it because I just like using electric in my PID controllers. So I have a port on one side, and that's for ambient, uh, but obviously that port is not large enough to put this in there. So what we've got to do is we've got to have an alternative. We've got to have a way to get in there, securely add this, um, so that we can use that still with a PID. I got everything I need, so far anyway. Uh, I'm going to use this one and an eighth inch uh, bimetal hole saw. And uh, I've got, now I've got two elements out here to show you for a reason. Because I went online to Mini Brew, and there's a lot of different vendors that'll sell these to you. And this is called a weldless bulkhead. Okay? And it's a one inch. NPT threaded, national pipe thread, so that an element screws right into it. Now, isn't that neat? Okay. Now, the reason I got this other one out here is because here is to show you, because people will ask, well, what about the bent ones? Well, this happens to be a low density rod or element. Guess what? That one fits too. So it doesn't matter. And all heating elements that I'm aware of, now you can get them special, okay, but the ones in general that are out there at Lowe's, Home Depot, your hardware store, all have a one inch NPT threaded base. So you don't have to go looking real hard to find that. Now this one in particular, this bulkhead, the design of this is really, really fabulous because it's actually threaded backwards. And I'll show you, okay. The common sense, you would think that this goes on the outside and this goes on the inside. It just kind of looks that way. Uh, and you can do that. I don't care. You can put it on that way. It doesn't matter to me. Uh, but it actually goes this way. And that's because, you see, it's threaded left-handed. So left-handed tightens it up. Right-handed, like we're, you know, righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Uh, right-handed loosens it up. So it's backwards. And there's a reason for that. So that when you put the heating element in there, okay, there's the heating element, and this is the pot. And as you start to turn that, it turns the base as well, and it'll actually, once you tighten up the heating element, if you give it another turn, it actually tightens up this connection right here in between the two so that it doesn't leak. Hmm. Oh, now what happens if you put it on the other way? Will it fit? Absolutely. But look what happens. If you put it on this way, you know where the flat ends here? And when you turn this, it loosens. So now this joint leaks. So pretty ingenious the way they designed this. And this thing was only, oh, I think it was like 14 bucks. But it'll go just about anywhere. Now, what I've done, you see, I've got, here's my pot. And you can see there's my spigot already. That, that's just another weldless bulkhead. <laughs> and I measured across the pot to make sure. And when I measured across the pot, I come up with like, oh, 11 is 3 quarters. Well, this puppy is only 10 and a half. So it's going to fit. It will fit all the way across here without touching the other side, which is good. Um, 
<clears throat> and additionally, now that I've got this bulkhead on here, I'll have to add, or you don't have to, uh, but if I add another, mm, what, inch and a half, uh, this should probably set about like this, which is just perfect. It'll give me about two, two and a half inches on that side. Now, the, the major question is always, where do you put this thing? Yep. Nod, yeah, I, I see you nodding your head. Yep, everybody wants to know, where do you put it? You put it wherever you want. But I'm going to put mine under the handle and on a right angle to that. Um, and the re I'm going to put it two and a half inches from the bottom. And what I did was I met, I'm, okay, I just measured two inches, two and a half inches from the bottom. And the reason for that is that's where the center of the element's going to be. I want to have enough space below it so that when this heat goes on and I get that start, get that thermal transfer, I've got enough room for that heat to push that mash away and the weight from the rest of that mash to start to drop and so it can, it can mix on its own. You see, if you get it down way too far, well then you start to burn everything down here and then all you get is heat going straight up. So you want it high enough where it does that. If you get it too high, uh, the challenge with that is, is that it only goes down so low with that thermal transfers, it starts to move those molecules in that hot, that hot uh, mash, and it doesn't, just doesn't go low enough, and it takes forever to get the whole thing hot. You got to pick up and shake it, and you got to do all kinds of, so we want to avoid that. So about two and a half to three inches from the bottom of your, of your kettle is a good place to put it. Let me get some more instruments here, and we're going to put this together. First things first, I'm going to drill, I already did this, I drill a small pilot hole right here. So I've already violated the integrity of this kettle and I'm in for, in for a pound. So now it's time to keep going. And the reason I drilled the pilot hole is because this large pilot bit likes to run all over the place. So if you get a nice hole started, it'll jump right in there and you'll never lose it. So let's get this. I put my foot in here just to hold it. And look at that. Now I got that big hole in there. Now, for those of you who are getting ready to write in like you did the last time, where's my hearing protection and eye protection, all this stuff? Let's live dangerous. Don't tell me you've never done this before. Put a little bit of oil on here. And what's that do? That just lets that bit run a little bit smoother without creating a whole lot of heat. And let's drill our hole. But it is, it is producing some heat and we're starting to drill through it. So this will take me just a few minutes. Well, as they say, no good plan survives first contact. Look, I was using that... Uh, that bimetal bit, and I've used it several times, so evidently it's dull, and I was able to score around here, but it wouldn't go through. So, plan B. I just took my jigsaw with a metal blade, and I just cut this, these stars all the way across, and now, all I gotta do is bend them. Since I've already got it scored, uh, they'll bend right out. And they'll break right along that score line. There we go, see? So I'll work my way around the end of this and we'll be back. Well, I've managed to, uh, you can see how I really tore that thing up. You see, there, there are no more, really almost no more ridges here. So I got to get me another one of those. Uh, but the good news is, is that I had the wherewithal since I had that pilot hole drilled is that I could use uh, just a standard jigsaw uh, to cut those star out. And this is what I used just so you'll see it there, there we go. Just a, it's a metal medium uh, bower. That's just a, a simple metal jigsaw blade and it did real good. Now, this hole don't look like much. It's probably the ugliest hole I've seen in a long time. So here's how this goes in. This is a, comes with these two of these gaskets that are heat resistant, okay? so. I know you're gonna write in. Oh, well, they was yeah, they'll withstand the heat. That goes there. This goes here. 
Yep. And remember, this is left hand threaded, right? Or correct? So, and bingo! There we go. And then I'll, I'll let me. I'm going to insert this one. Then I insert my rod, uh, my element, and look at that. One element inside the pot. All I've got to do now is clean it. And, of course, hook up my two wires. Uh, gosh. It's a match made in heaven. I'm loving it. So, I will add the link to the section below the video so that you can get one of these if you need it. Um, and uh, just follow these instructions. It goes together that, that easy. It's real quick. Now, I, a comment about cleaning. Gentlemen, and I'm talking to the men uh, it amazes me how much in depth you will go to clean a still, but you won't clean up behind yourself. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Your wife's probably pointing at you right now. Listen, the, scrubbing it, letting it soak in vinegar, and then running vinegar through it, and then running a wash, or and then running hot water through it, and then doing a sacrificial, all that... Look, if, if you're using stainless steel, just a good warm soapy water, wash it out, rinse it, it's good to go, okay? It's just like if you were going to eat off a plate, you wouldn't do all that to a plate. Uh, so, uh, if you have copper in there, like you got a copper worm, hey, of course, you know, mix up that mixture that I showed you about. And here's, here, uh, check this video out about how to make that. Uh, let that sit there for a little bit and then rinse it out. Warm soapy water, and that, that's all you got to do. Um, I don't know where this idea came from, a sacrificial run. I have no idea. I can't track it down anywhere. But everybody wants to do one. Mm, not necessary. Until next time, happy distilling.